Hey everybody, David Wolf here. This is uh, my first live stream, so I have no idea what I'm doing. So, here we go. Thanks for coming. It looks like we've got a few people watching. If you're watching from um, our homepage, carolinafield.org, uh, click on the lower right-hand corner and you can make it full screen. Turn the volume up because the piano is a really big range, so it's, it's, the volume is pretty low. And um, yeah, this is awesome. And if you want to watch it on YouTube where you can comment along the way, there's like a comment stream, there's a, there's a link that says click here to view on YouTube. Then you can go to YouTube, you can make it full screen, you can comment at your leisure, and uh, awesome. So I think we're going to jump into some music. I've been debating what to play, and uh, on my way here, I, uh, I was remembering about 10 years ago when, when I was going, I was entering a mass, and I was playing the piano and the organ for it, and it was about, it was like five minutes before it was going to start, and Father Pitts comes up to me and he says, hey David, would you mind if I were to give the sermon today, and then you were to give the same sermon on the piano? And I said, oh yeah, absolutely, I got, I got that. And uh, you know when you say something, and then a second later you think, I really should have said no? That was one of those moments. And that's kind of how I'm feeling right now, I've never done this before, but I'm excited about it. And, um, but the sermon, and as I, it was really vivid, vividly coming back to me in little bits and pieces. The sermon was about how there's all this chaos surrounding you. And then out of chaos, you start to see some reason to all of it, or at least you start to see some clarity, but that sometimes the chaos just overwhelms us. And I think that's how all of us feel right now. And, um, so I was listening to this short sermon about chaos. And uh, then it was my turn, and I came up to the piano with no idea what to do. <laughs> and uh, but I, so I just sat down and um, and, and it did something like this. I'm not going to go to the same extreme I did because this piano is too nice, but I'll, I'll give you an idea.
We're living in such a strange time. Not only is there this international tragedy that is getting worse and worse every day, we're counting the death toll. And last night, President Trump says that we need to expect at least 100,000 deaths, if not up to 200,000 or 240, if we do things perfectly. But I think what's even more unsettling in a way, if that's not enough, is that there's no weddings or funerals. There's nobody going into the churches or into the synagogues or just going out into the squares with candlelight vigils. vigils. Usually if there's some sort of tragedy, people rush out. They rush out into the streets because they want to be together with other humans. They light candles and they sing. But there's none of that now. So I thought, we're going to make our way to Chopin eventually. This will be only a half hour or so, or 35 minutes. But first I wanted to play a couple more hymns, just to have a moment to meditate. As most of you know, I have, or had, I guess you say, three brothers. And my older brother, Josh, had the gift of jazz, you could say. I mean, he did. My younger brother, Dan, is really great with um, gospel music, an amazing leader of worship. And that gift I do not have, although I've spent a lot of my life playing for Sunday services, I actually started when I was when I was 10 and the music director of my church, a Baptist church, came up to me and said, David, knowing that I play piano, would you be our organist? Our organist had retired. We had this wonderful organ sitting there empty every Sunday. And so I said, sure. When do I start? And about a week later, barely being able to reach the pedals, and not knowing what to do with them, even if I could, 
I made my debut on the organ. And what's fantastic about the organ is it has this great bass and the pedals. And there's this majestic quality to the organ that's just fantastic. It's so orchestral, it's so grandiose, it kind of brings you back almost into the sense of the Renaissance. And so I, uh, I started out on the organ, but a year later I actually got my first gig as a musician as the accompanist for another Baptist church down the street, a Southern Baptist church. And so I would go to my Baptist church down, down the road, I would play organ for them, and then halfway through the sermon I would leave, which um, just between us was kind of an awesome thing. We're not live, are we? But then I would go over to the other church and I'd play piano for them. And I remember the first time I played the organ, I played Blessed Assurance and these other, this last one I did and the next one I want to play right now. And I'm going to move away from him, move into a song. Uh, but these, uh, I thought this music might somehow soothe the soul a little bit.
So me and my family, the three of us, we're doing great. Here in the hall is just uh, myself and about 40 yards away, socially distanced, Stephen Willen up there doing the lighting for us. Uh, my family and I, we've been tracking the coronavirus a little bit longer than most, not because we were any brighter, but because it started in, well, China, but then in Korea. And as you know, my wife is Korean. I got married in Korea. I've lost a family in Korea. Uh, Young Mi actually did her uh, doc or master's in Tegu, which was the, one of the epicenters there. And so we were watching the news every day, watching it move through Korea. And then we started watching it move through Italy. And that's where we met. We both lived for a few years in, in Italy. And um, I was in touch with friends there as we saw the quarantine go down, seeing how all of them were dealing with it. And, uh, and then it went to Snohomish County and King County, Washington State. I was born in King County, grew up in Snohomish County. Parents are in Snohomish County. A lot of my relatives are in King County, Snohomish County. And next, sure enough, New York City, where I spent 10 years. And just yesterday, seeing the hospital go up in, in Central Park, where I used to go just about every weekend. We'd bring Rachel there in her stroller before we moved down here, have picnics. And now Central Park is the site of a hospital. So this is, this is personal for all of us. That song's a favorite. So, um, great. Thank you so much for being here. Next, I want to do something um, from Italy, a recent piece out of Italy composed not too long ago. It's a new piece to me as of about a month or so ago. And um, it's called I Giorni, which means the days. And it, uh, it's a very simple piece. It, um, there's a lot of repetition. It seems a lot more simple than it is in a way, in that if you just kind of sit back and let it roll over you, you'll find, at least I find, and a lot of people find, that it somehow speak, speaks to you and it, it transforms you. You'll, you'll feel different at the end of it than you did at the beginning. And uh, so I hope you enjoy it. I have a little bit of visuals to go with it. Um, 
And this goes out especially to, to all of my friends, dear friends in, in Italy.
Isn't that pretty? The days. So uh, we're reaching towards the end of our first broadcast. This will be our first of, um, we do have Chopin coming up. We, this is our first of several. This will be my first of three between now and, and the end of May. Every three weeks, Wednesday night, 7.30, um, I want to give a, give a shout out to Dr. Dempsey at the college, the whole community here at the college. Uh, I think Steve and I are the only people on the college campus right now. The college is, of course, closed. Um, I'll be going straight back from here after washing my hands again for the 20th time today, driving back home straight to my house, you know, showering right away. But I think, but I think we're, we're all kind of going through the same things right now. But I wanted to do this here rather than from my living room. I do have a pretty close to a concert grand in my living room at home. But this piano in this home for me right here on the stage of Owens Auditorium is where I wanted to kind of do this, reach out to the community here and bring us together, at least for a few short moments, and start a, 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 a series where we can come together virtually, at least for now. I, I wore my suit for you because I knew you all probably did the same for me. And uh, yeah, my wife helped me with my hair. You know, my normal hair people were, were busy. Um, so I'm gonna do some Chopin now. This, what I wanted to play for you is uh, the raindrop prelude of Chopin. And first I'll, I'll set it up. It's one of my favorite pieces of, Ch of Chopin. It's about the rain. And uh, look at my, my people. So the premise is you have this A flat repeating and it represents the rain. Now this goes on for a solid seven minutes. Starts as an A flat, turns into a G sharp, then back into an A flat. Yeah, same note. And, um, but it lasts for seven minutes. But Chopin, in his genius, is able to then craft a whole piece around this, this rain. And apparently, he was about 38 years old. He died when he was 39. And Georges Sand, who was with him at the time in Spain, they were in Mallorca. Uh, he had been sent there by his doctors to, to a warmer climate so that he could recover because was, he was in very poor health. And so they went together. I think she had one of her children or maybe two of their children uh, together in a monastery in this cell that was very small. There was an upright piano there with lots of broken keys, uh, lots of broken strings, completely out of tune. And it was there in that cell that Chopin composed the 24 preludes of Opus 28. Uh, which is one of his great masterworks, the whole 24. But among those 24 preludes, this is my favorite. And according to Georges Sand in her diaries, after Chopin had died, she wrote that Chopin had, they had, that she had been out with the kids. Chopin was at the piano, it was raining. He had what he called a waking vision, sitting at the piano as if he was in a dream and he envisioned his own death by drowning. And, um, and it was raining, it was cold, it was damp. But it starts out with this beautiful Chopin melody. Always with the rain. And it's one of, one of these tender, beautiful springtime uh, melodies. Innocent, pure. You might, it might make you think of a first love or, or the springtime of one's life but it's very much in the moment. It's very innocent and pure and full of wonder. But then suddenly the clouds darken and this spring-like melody turns into a funeral procession. And then the funeral procession starts from way at a distance. It comes closer and closer and closer. And eventually it's right there. It's dramatic, it's big, it's, it's, it's bold, and it's so tragic and sad. And then it goes away at a distance a little bit, it backs, backs away a little bit, it comes back even closer and bigger until it's just you know, screaming and wailing almost. And then it dissipates and out of nowhere, and the reason I love this piece so much is, is the last 30 seconds. Uh, this melody from the beginning comes back. And it's just like it was at the beginning. The same notes, the same everything, but the feeling of it is completely transformed. It's, it's as if 
the person who was mourning the death of, of springtime or the springtime, maybe his first love or her first love or however you might envision it, it's as if he's remembering back to that time and it's no longer present, it's no longer real, it's, 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 a, it's a memory and it's ethereal. And then suddenly there's this kind of cry out with no accompaniment. And over the course of about seven or eight notes, it just dissolves into a sort of acceptance. And it ends not only melancholy, but it ends with this statement, short statement of hope and renewal that's um, one of Chopin's most, most beautiful moments. So this will be what we end with today. The next program will be completely different, uh, and the one after that will be different again. Um, I've never done a program quite like this before, but I thought this would be you know, the right way to go for today. So Chopin's Raindrop Prelude, I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and enjoy the sound of rain.
Thank you. I wish you to be safe. Wash your hands. Stay safe with your families. And uh, I'll do the same. And I'll see you back in three weeks for the next uh, live at BPAC. Thanks for joining us.